Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to another House of the Dragon video. I guess this is my first video in quite a while, but I will be covering this show for the next, like, what, 10 weeks now. Like, man, this is going to be going until November, so this is going to be a really, really crazy next couple of months here, and I apologize for missing episode one. I had a lot of stuff happening then, and I've just been slowly catching up with everything over the last couple of days, and so I had episode one here. I won't do an episode two trailer breakdown just because there's sort of no point. You'll get this review, and episode two is airing tomorrow, at least at the time of, of me recording this but i will be doing my episode 2 video tomorrow along with an episode 3 trailer breakdown that same night and um yeah man i'm just I, i'm so so excited for this i really cannot wait for house of the dragon to start to pick up here and i mean honestly episode one was just absolutely fantastic this really this captured or recaptured the magic of the early seasons of game of thrones so anyways before we go any further if you do want more house of the dragon content like this then make sure to be a subscriber this episode really i think focused a lot on you know obviously that the title was really centered on you know the heir of the throne and and what's you know because that's sort of the story of the dance of the dragons right and this first episode really proves to us I think why that is so important why that story was such a great story and honestly I mean just after watching this episode you know my first impressions of it are this is going to be such a great show lasting I don't even know how many seasons I mean this could really go on for four to five seasons you know if it's up to HBO they want to go longer so it really depends but I can actually see you know because they did announce that Jon Snow sequel I can actually see a place where they can actually really fix the, the Game of Thrones world here, where I know people have issues with the ending of Game of Thrones, but I think that Jon Snow sequel could fix a lot of stuff there. There could be some stuff there with the White Walkers as well, you know, that they could recontextualize some stuff there, which I think would be super, super cool. And I think why not? I mean, this world is so amazing, and I think House of the Dragons here definitely proves that. Early in the episode, we do see Jaehaerys. I thought that was really amazing. I mean, seeing these characters, you know, these characters we've always just sort of heard about or read about, and so to see them officially cast and see what they would look like, you know, in live action, it was just... The opening sequence I thought was really amazing. It really reminded me of Lord of the Rings, and the I guess in Fellowship of the Ring in the very beginning, you know, where the story of the Nine Rings and whatnot is told. That's sort of what that reminded me of here. Speaking of Lord of the Rings, that new show is actually coming out next month. The timeline here is set 172 years before Daenerys Targaryen. So that right there, you know, I mean, basically the opening sequence really just kind of set that up, right? It was basically letting us know. And for the people who don't know the history of everything, you know, this is set a long, long time ago. And I mean, this is when the Targaryens ruled, right? Like this is way before the Mad King's time, way before Robert's Rebellion. Rebellion. This is at a time when dragons weren't necessarily a myth, right? Or, I mean, obviously they weren't a myth. And when I say that, I don't necessarily mean that, like, people during the Game of Thrones timeline just, like, all believed that it was a myth. You know, obviously there's a lot of people who believed in them, but there were some people who were like, well, I don't really know. You read about this stuff, but there's nothing there. There's no real evidence of, of certain things, and, like, obviously most people... You know, ordinary people living ordinary lives aren't going to necessarily believe in such a thing because they just sort of read things and they believe it's just fairy tales and stuff, right? So it's really cool to see during this timeline that it, it's just they're alive and well, you know, during the tourney. Someone was like, I bet you five dragons or whatever the hell that was. I was like, holy shit. This episode really set up just the state of the world and how just how different it is during the Targaryen reign here, right? There's a lot of characters that we met. We met Lord Corlys, uh, Queen Emma, uh, Princess Rhaenyra, obviously uh, Lady Alice in Hightower. There, there was Otto Hightower, you know, Otto Hightower and obviously Viserys, but as well as Daemon Targaryen. I think those three really stole the episode. Personally, I think that... The those three characters really stole this episode in terms of the performances, but also just kind of like really setting up the rift here with all of the characters. You know, Allison, Lady Allison obviously does play a role in the future, but we've gotten really no hint at that besides that scene where she went and visited Viserys. This one here focuses more on the other aspects to it, right? On the other things like Daemon being the heir to the throne, but obviously, you know, with the birth of Balon and the sudden death of Balon, the joy he had in that, and then obviously, you know, just what happened afterwards. Like, there's a lot of dysfunction there, and, you know, if you know the story of things that happened later on with with uh, with Daemon and Rhaenyra and whatnot, it's kind of cool to get some of this context here. And I, and I will say that and you guys can let me know i don't know how much i should talk about the overall history and overall story here because i don't want to spoil it for everybody right because i don't want to spoil the overall show though i will say 
they could change a lot of stuff up because a lot of things happen. Like in The Walking Dead, they obviously changed a lot of things up. Even on Game of Thrones, there were certain characters that were never introduced, right? So they might follow certain story templates, but things overall might actually be a little different. This episode really focused on Viserys's, you know, belief that his wife, Emma, was going to have, have an heir. Um, you know, they did actually tease a lot of stuff here with Viserys' death. Like, he's going to be a big death this season. Um, you know, he's constantly hurting himself, you know, he's getting all these infections and whatnot because of e either the Iron Throne, at least that's what he believes, and obviously this does tease that he's probably going to be the big death of this season, much like Ned Stark's death of season one, right, you know, Viserys' death is going to be the one, I mean, and you can see it after watching this episode, you know, like, he's the one person, really, that is keeping this all together, when he dies, everything, you know, is going to be thrown into chaos and not necessarily yet. You know, obviously there's going to be some issues because some people don't want Rhaenyra to be the queen because they believe, oh, a woman shouldn't be on the throne. But in the next couple of episodes, like I said, we did get some little hints there that Alicent and Viserys are going to start to bond a little bit more here. And then eventually, yeah, I won't get into that too much there, but there's going to be a lot more drama coming very soon. Daemon and Otto obviously hate each other a lot. Like they, they just really do. With Daemon, it's really, it was really cool to kind of see that he was the wielder of Dark Sister, because he is, right? He's the rider of Seraxis, wielder of Dark Sister. And it was just kind of cool to hear this, because in Game of Thrones, we never saw Dark Sister, right? We would just hear about that. I believe we heard about it. I can't remember what season it was, but it was lost eventually during the Blackfire Rebellion. And so to hear a lot about this ancient sword that Visenya, I believe, who was the, the sister wife or whatever of Aegon the Conqueror, had, it, it, it's, it's just, it's really cool. You know, if you love the Game of Thrones story, there are history. I love that mention there. That was an awesome Easter egg. The tourney, I thought, was really epic. They kind of had it, you know, uh, going back and forth between the i guess technically the death of, of emma i will say daemon's attire here really l reminded me of Rhaegar targaryen's attire during the, the well i guess robert's rebellion i mean we never really got to see you know live action what that would have necessarily looked like completely but it was still really cool to see that in action and just to see how the targaryens do things right now obviously the big death here was, was queen emma or emma i keep saying emma because they pronounce it like that but it's spelled like a e m m a which you want to kind of say emma but I guess it's Emma. Anyways, his decision was just absolutely horrible. And obviously, it's just a different time. And, and the world of, of Westeros and stuff, it's very medieval, you know. So, it, of course, like, obviously, it's not going to be Emma's decision. It's going to be Viserys' decision. And it's just, it was rough to watch that. It was, it was, yeah, I mean, for obvious reasons, right? It was just really rough. And so he... He loses his wife and his son, and then we get the eventual funeral of, of both of them, and then we hear Rhaenyra's actually said Dracarys. That's definitely a word that Game of Thrones fans are going to remember, or, or at least recognize. Thus starts the, the fighting for the claim of the throne. There's a lot of people who are, are trying to fight for their own claim, and obviously most people don't want Daemon, because he's very, very reckless, very, I guess, he's just not fit for the throne. And... Viserys, I mean, he he makes a good point. He does stand by Daemon, like, so much. He stands by him. But after a night out when he mentions that, you know, Balon was there for the day, basically, and, I mean, really crazy comments. I, I, I don't know what's wrong with Daemon, but he's a cool character, honestly. He's probably my favorite character of the episode, but, like, such a crazy thing to say, and obviously Viserys wasn't gonna like that. And so Viserys banishes him, uh, names Rhaenyra the heir, and then we get this big ending ceremony here. Uh, we see Rickon Stark, so that was kind of cool to actually get some of this, uh, like a Stark Easter egg here. Uh, Viserys tells Rhaenyra about the winter. Um, I doubt we're going to be dealing with any of that, but it's something that obviously, like, from king to king, or I guess king to queen in this scenario, the ruler of the Seven Kingdoms must know that. They must know that there is this overall threat coming. And it, it was kind of cool to hear because, like, winter is coming. That's a line that I haven't heard in a very long time. So I really like the fact that they actually showed us that. But, yeah, in the end, Rhaenyra beca became the heir. And obviously, she's a little worried about it. We did see Alicent a little jealous, it seemed like. Overall, this episode focused on, you know, really, I guess, enhancing some of the history here. But it, I think it did such a good job introducing these characters because I feel like I really know these characters more than I ever have. Because before, I couldn't really put faces to the, to the characters' names. I just knew of the overall story. And so watching it here, it's just so much easier to just sort of understand where they're going here and sort of the pacing of everything. And I'm, I'm really excited for episode two. I can't wait to see where they're going to go with certain aspects of the story, where some of the Alicent and Viserys drama is going to come into play. and. 
you know, eventually when she does have like her kids with Viserys, you know, that's essentially the Dance of the Dragons. That's the Targaryen Civil War that eventually is going to happen, which obviously they will explore a lot of that in season two. And just just like Game of Thrones, you know, earlier on in the series, it was so much fun just, you know, experiencing all the characters, the, the history, the world. This episode really did that amazingly, I believe. And I just can't wait. Honestly, I just really can't wait to see where the show is going to go. And episode one, I thought was just absolutely phenomenal. So anyways, I'm going to leave it here. Definitely post all your thoughts down below. And um, yeah, I'm not sure when my review will be coming out. Either it'll be coming out today on August 27th, the day I'm recording this, or on the 28th. And if it comes on the 28th, then that means tonight I will be doing my episode 2 review as well as my episode 3 trailer breakdowns. So yeah, anyways, I hope you guys all enjoyed the video, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.